Hello everybody, today I'll show you how you can mimic the 4-inch whoop from Blueprints inside the PCG whoops. This will help you add objects easily to your scene uh, without being limited to the design of your PCG graph. For example, if you create uh, some road that you want to place objects alongside, you can have unlimited number of different objects that you want to place, for example, white poles or road signs or benches or electrical boxes or something like this. And later, if you want to add another object, you don't need to change your PCG graph. You just need to add an object to the array and the warp will add everything. So let me remind you how the blueprints for each whoop looks like. So I have here some simple logic that in my blueprint construction script I'm just creating a box and I'm placing it on the place of the blueprint into the level. So if I change the type of the variable for the box from just a single variable type to an array Let's accept the change and this will make it so that I'm able to connect multiple boxes and there is no limit how much boxes I'll add and this allows me to run my logic independently for, for each object that I add into my scene. Let's change now the script to work with this new array. So I'll do for each loop. The construction script will connect to this for each loop and the loop body will execute the same logic like before and the array element will be the static mesh that I'll add for each time the loop is executed and for them not to be placed always on the position of my blueprint I'll just use the index of the array to multiply it by some number, for example, 150. And here I'll add this to the X component of my blueprint position. And then I'll connect this to this new transform location. And for the Y and Z, I'll use the same value as my blueprint. So this will do a loop that for each object that I connect, it will place a static mesh 150 units away from the last one. Let's compile and save this. And if we go back to the level, select our blueprint and start adding boxes to this array you can see the boxes are now placed and I have no limitation of how much objects I add. It will run the script for any number of objects that, that I have. This is the power of for each loop combined with an array. So how you can mimic this inside the PCG system. So the PCG is created like a procedural generation framework that it's used to place objects in the scene way more easier and way more performant than doing it with blueprints. Let's go back to our blueprint. Let's disconnect everything. I'll even, I'll not delete it for now just to reference it later when I show you what we are doing, but it's not connected, so it's not doing anything into our scene. We'll add a PCG component into our blueprint. Search for PCG after you click the Add button, choose this PCG component. And if you don't have this PCG component listed here, go to Edit, Plugins, search for PCG here, and mark this Procedural Content Generation Framework, PCG. This should be with the check mark. It will prompt you to restart your engine. And after you're done, you can add this PCG component. And here into the graph field, 
of this component, you need to connect a PCG graph. So back into your content browser, right click, search for PCG here as well, and create a PCG graph. I already have two graphs. One of them, it's just an empty graph that we'll now use to connect to our PCG component here into our blueprint. Let's drag our PCG for loop example graph into our PCG component in the blueprint, compile and save. And the other graph, I recreated the logic that I had before into the blueprint. So I am doing a transform points for any input point of our PCG graph. The transform points is multiplying the loop index with 150 and moving it into the X direction. And I'm scaling by a factor of three because my meshes are very small and I want to have bigger. That's why I'm using the this create attribute with a value of three. And then I'm spawning a static mesh. And the important part here is that for the static mesh spawner, I'm using this PCG mesh selector by attribute and the attribute name I have added here is mesh. So I need to make sure that when I'm inputting a data into this PCG loop, I have an attribute called mesh that we'll use to spawn this static mesh. So let's go back now into the other PCG graph that we created. It's currently empty. And if you remember into our loop example, what we are doing is we are taking this boxes variable. Just make sure it's a static mesh type, it's an array type. Instead of single here, it should be an array. And you have this I icon here or this instance editable checkbox marked here. This means that inside our PCG graph, we can right click, we can get actor property and the actor property name will be this boxes variable. If you type it correctly, the same name as in the blueprint, the warning and error messages here will disappear. If you have an error in the name, you have an error as well that you don't have such property. So make sure it's written the same way. So right now, the name of the variable is fine, so we can continue with this. So what we have done into our blueprint before is we have taken the position of our actor with this get actor location. We will do the same into our PCG graph here. So right click, get actor data. And this get actor data will be with the mode set to get single point. This will create a point at the place that we have put our blueprint. So what we need to do with this boxes property. In order to use our PCG loop, let's drag the loop inside here. So select this other PCG graph, drag it here and choose to make a loop node because if you choose subgraph node, it will be executed just once. This warp node is executed multiple times. Right now, I have created a warp here. It says a warp below the name of my subgraph, so you know that it's the right way that you need it. So for this, we need the data to be into different sets. If I mark this actor property boxes. If I open it right here down into the attributes panel, it should show you all the variables that we have connected. So currently we have five different boxes and they're in a single attribute set. This attribute set here is just a single value. If we do an attribute partition, 
and if we partition by the index value so open this partition attribute and select the index if we click the a key now on this attribute partition we will have the same five elements but they will be split into five different sets this is very important in order to have this pcg loop working so it will work on each different set not on a s each different element into a single set so make sure that you are using an attribute partition to split this into different sets and let's select this boxes get actor property and change the output attribute name to mesh because as you remember in the static mesh spawner we have created the static mesh spawner with an attribute name of mesh for the static mesh that it wants to spawn so right now let's copy the position of our blueprint into each of these static mesh values so let's do a copy attribute the target will be our attribute partition sets and the source will be our actor data what we'll copy is the position and we'll copy it actually the full transform we'll copy the transform from the actor data into the transform of the points you have a warning because this is just a single attribute it doesn't have a position value so let's convert this from attribute set to point and let's disconnect the old connection and connect the new one right now this error has disappeared and if i click the a key here into the copy attributes you have a point with the exact position of our blueprint and at the end we'll have a mesh variable for the mesh that we entered into our array and i'll have five different sets with this kind of data if i connect now this to our pcg warp let's save this and right now when my graph updates into the level you'll see that it works exactly like before so if i delete some element from here it will be deleted from the scene if i add some elements they will be added to the scene as well let's add a different element so on and so on so this allows you to run your pcg logic onto an input array and this is very very useful like i told you before to do different objects and you will not be limited with the different type of objects that you have and the logic for them you execute it for every single object that you add to the array like for example on this road i can have different item this box and i'll run the same logic that i run from all other elements but with different parameters let's change it and this hopefully shows you how useful this type of logic is because as you can see i can populate alongside this point different kind of objects and i'm not limited if you would like me to make a more detailed tutorial about the full road generation spline pcg tool please write in the comments to let me know so hopefully this helps you to create some more advanced pcg graphs for your games if you have any questions or any ideas for new tutorials please write in the comments if you like this you can like and subscribe for the channel 
If you want to help me to continue make these tutorials, please join the channel. This will allow you to view the videos earlier and also it will support me with a small amount each month or you can use the super thanks button to support me just once. It will be very appreciated. So guys, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.